Hello, welcome to MTG Studios. I'm Maria. Today we're going to explore a watercolor technique called Wet on Wet with the artist Georgia O'Keeffe, who painted this little watercolor in 1917. It's called Evening Star Number no. 6. We're going to try and recreate that using the Wet on Wet technique. Now, Georgia O'Keeffe is known famously for her large paintings, oil paintings mostly, of flowers and the New Mexico landscape. But she worked a lot in watercolors because it allowed her the freedom to explore her love of color and abstraction. And it really represents her carefree spirit. So if you're ready to explore a little carefree painting with the wet on wet technique, Let's get started because it's time for art. So the first thing that we want to do is set up our work area, our palette, brushes, two cups of water, a sponge, and some paper towels. What I like to do first is take my sponge in the clean water and drip some water on the colors that I plan on using in my painting. I don't need to wet every single color in my palette because I'm not going to use every color. And all of your supplies, if you're right-handed, should be to the right-hand side of your work area. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to keep my paint and my water over there because when I use my brush I don't want to have to drip across my painting. If I'm left-handed then I want to keep everything on the left-hand side of my work area. And the painting we're going to copy today is Georgia O'Keeffe's watercolor Evening Star number no. 6. And we're basically only using three primary colors, the yellow, the red, and the blue, with a little touch of black to make that blue really rich and dark. You'll notice some of the white areas that are left on the painting. With watercolor, you want to leave your whites. Think of it this way. In watercolor, your paint, your white is your water and your paper. Although most paint palettes do include white paint, we don't want to add that to our watercolor because that will make it cloudy and opaque. We want our watercolors to be translucent. When you add the, wa the white to the watercolor, it basically turns it into another medium called gouache, which is opaque and thick, which is great to work on if you're working on a dark surface. But with white paper, watercolor, your water and your paper are your white. So I'm ready to begin. This is a very direct way of painting this wet on wet technique. We're not going to draw our image first. We are going to paint first with clean water where we want all of our things to be. So the first thing I'm going to put down is my star where the yellow goes. And I'm just using my clean water to make the paper wet. And I want to use the light in my studio to help me see where the water is going on my paper because it's a little challenging to see it sometimes. And you'll notice I taped down my artwork to this board. It helps especially with the wet on wet technique because our paper is going to get so wet it will start to buckle and create what I refer to as hills and valleys on my paper. The hills is going to be where the paper buckles up and the valleys where it buckles down. And so this helps keep my paper in place and kind of lessens that buckle. You're still going to have some of that. 
going to still have areas where it creates puddles of water here and there. Now down here I want to be very careful. There's a little sliver of white that kind of indicates maybe a mountain range of some sort or another. So I want to make sure I keep that white dry. And as you'll see later, as soon as you start putting paint down, it bleeds everywhere where there's water. And where the paper is dry, it won't. Now some of my paper is already starting to dry out a little bit. So just go back in and touch it up with a little bit of water so you can see where your, where your edges are. And now just a nice smooth stroke across the bottom for where that blue was going to go. And now I'm ready to begin. I want to start with my lightest color, which is the yellow. I also want to mix a little touch of orange into that yellow, just to kind of warm it up a little bit so it's not so stark. And I want to test my colors on a piece of paper before I start to use them. It's always a good idea to test your colors on scrap pieces of watercolor paper. Just sort of paint that in, leave that circle of white in the middle there. Don't want to lose that, that's the star. And this is where you're going to need some uh, paper towel. Kind of mop up your brush. So if you dry your brush off just a little bit, you can kind of mop up some of the intense color and make it a little lighter. Remember, the more paper that shows through underneath, the lighter the color looks. And the more water you use, the lighter the color looks. I'm going to add a little bit more water there to kind of lighten that up. Now I'm going to start in with my red. And this red, you've got, in this particular palette, I've got two kinds of reds. I've got this uh, cadmium red, and then I have this magenta red. The cadmium red is kind of like a, the red of a tomato. And then, Magenta red is more of a, it's got more of a pink color to it. So you see how that starts to bleed in those areas, but it stops where the water stopped, where the paint paper is dry. It's kind of fun. I'm going to pick up some more and continue. This process is a very quick, quick process. Wet on wet technique is fun to explore for a lot of reasons. And like with Georgia O'Keeffe, she liked to explore color and the fluidity of the medium. And we want to keep this little sliver of white there, remember? Now because our paper is wet and the color is wet, it's starting to kind of pull at the edges and in those little valleys I talked about. So just keep pushing it around here and there. Try not to add any more water once it gets to this point. You can always slurp it up by drying off your brush a little bit and then pushing that color around again a little bit more. Now we're ready for 
our blue. I'm going to pick up some of that nice rich blue that I have in my palette. I'm going to put that down straight. Come right up and keep that white. I don't want it to bleed in with my red just yet. I want to get my blue area in first. And then start playing around with bleeding. Now remember I said we're going to add a little touch of black. Black is the strongest color you're going to have in your palette. So we want to be careful that we don't add too much. So we want to just kind of dot it in a little bit. And then just kind of push it around. And make it blend with that blue to create that rich midnight blue that Georgia has in her picture. Now we're ready to start playing around with where we've got blues on either side of the star and just that little touch right there. Now I know a little bit splashed here and there, but hey, it's okay. We're just playing here. We're not trying to create a masterpiece. And I'm going to just inch up my brush to that edge of the red. Just drag that along and then sort of back off a little bit. And there you go. So now I can kind of play around some more with the bleeding. Again, it's all right if something splashes here and there. The fun of the wet on wet technique is that you're not really in control. There are some controls, but a lot of it is just the fun of exploring what happens when you let the paint do the work for you. And even though we're trying to copy a Georgia O'Keeffe painting, at some point it ceases to be her painting and it becomes yours. I'm just adding some more red here and there where I need it to be a little bit richer and a little fuller. And seeing that blue dot just sort of disappears there. Now at this point, we see some of this stuff really puddling in a way that I'm not crazy about. So I'm going to tap my brush off a little bit, just kind of soak up some of that and push it back to where I want it. Same thing down here. I've got a big puddle of this gray blue. So I want to kind of get rid of that. Push this red back up over here. And maybe add a little bit more blue to the bottom here. And a touch more of that black. Not quite as dark as I'd like it to be. And maybe add a couple more dots here and there. I had an art professor in college who used to say the trick to good art is knowing when to start and knowing when to stop. When to start is when you have a good idea. When to start, stop is when it just feels 
done. Well, I hope you enjoyed the process of exploring the watercolor wet on wet technique. It's a very quick, very direct way of painting, so it does go by in the blink of an eye. So I recommend keeping a stack of watercolor paper handy as you explore this medium a little more. Maybe do like Georgia O'Keeffe did, make a series. Keep them similar, but maybe change something just a little bit. Maybe do a series of stars like she did or the moon, or some flowers, or one of your favorite objects. Or just, as Georgia O'Keeffe did, explore a little abstraction with your watercolor. I'll let you go have some more fun with the wet-on-wet wet technique. Until next time, keep on making time for art.